Today's video, we're going to be talking about um, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. All right, Alphas, welcome to Life Light. This series is all about knowledge. Uh, what I have with me today is my man, Unk. What's going on, everybody? All right, Unk is a future YouTuber. He's in the process of getting his channel up and running, and he's actually one of my very close friends and brothers. Um, let me be honest with you about um, the knowledge segment. Um, I mentioned in a video earlier this month that um, I wanted to change the format of how I do my knowledge segment. And this is honestly the person behind the change. Uh, he realized um, my knowledge segment wasn't me. He could tell that I was reading a teleprompter, that I liked the information, but the way I was presenting it to you wasn't me. And he called me on the bluff, and I really had to sit down and think about what I was doing. And if the channel that I'm creating is really true to me, and at this point, I had to change it. I had to change the content. So um, this is how we're going to be doing the knowledge segment from now on. We're just going to have a conversation about things that are going on that are either bothering us, that are important, that you need to know, or, you know, recreational stuff. It doesn't matter. But let's go. But we're going on Donald Trump. So let's, let's look at for an individual that you can really see is not the choice for you because he doesn't offer you what you need. What makes him so appealing? And my opinion is America wants to say what they want to say. For too long, you wanted to say something about somebody or what they're doing, but we're in a time frame where everything has to be politically correct. You can't call a person lazy anymore. You have to say they're not motivated properly. Uh, you see a person that's overweight, and because they're overweight and they don't want to do what they need to do, you say they're mildly obese, and because of their health danger, we don't want to push them. But that's not fair all the time. You want to say what you want to say, and unfortunately, Donald Trump says what he wants to say, and people love it. Why? Because every time we open our mouth, somebody says, ah, you shouldn't say that, you bite your tongue. You bite your tongue. And he is saying everything that politically correctness would tell us not to say. He's saying it. And you have you have a good amount of people that really like that. And they're not thinking past anything else except that he says the things that you really want to say. For me right now, Donald Trump is... Okay, I'm going to put it like this. Donald Trump is... Let's just say he's a woman trying to seduce a man, right? He's doing a great job. He's seducing him. Donald Trump is doing a perfect job of seducing the country and how he's able to do that. He's literally saying the things that we really want to say. The things that are really on our minds, but we have enough control and understanding that that's not how the law works. But the simple fact that you have a candidate that is just saying whatever he feels, he's going to find a niche market or a niche amount of people that are going to subscribe to that information. For example, there are tons of Americans, and I'm going to be flat out, that don't like immigrants. There are tons of Americans that feel like um, the immigration issue we have right now is a huge problem. They're taking away jobs or opportunities Legal from Americans. Jobs. Legal jobs. Legal jobs. From Americans. So these are mainly your red states, I believe, and you know, mainly in like the uh, Midwest region and areas of, the, of that sort. So you're going to get a lot of buy-in, and if you finally have someone that is unpolitically correct and doesn't care what they think, they have enough money to say whatever they feel, um, they're going to appeal to the people that say, you know what, I feel the same way. I feel like we should get a lot of these immigrants out of here. I feel like exactly. we should build up a wall so that we have opportunities. And it's a seduction, because in reality, a lot of the things that he thinks he can do, legally he can't. No. He can't do it at all. Again, it's what you want to hear. You get mad at your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. You want to just say, shut up. But you don't say that. Say, baby, can you please say that differently? And, you know, I really wasn't happy with what you want to say. And he tells you, just tell him what you feel. You can't 
tell people what you feel. It's, it's just not what we do. No. I mean, it's real. We, we can't do it. Because with everything that you do, there's a repercussion. Every action, there's a re reaction. And sometimes the reactions just aren't worth what you're going to get back from it. And people don't understand it. But it's so funny that he's running and everybody says, oh, he's not going to do nothing. So we sit back and we relax. Uh, maybe some of you alphas remember, before everything really got started, a kid decided to put these nuts. These nuts was running as a candidate. Yeah. And guess what? These nuts started making game. Started yeah. making game. A simple joke. A classic joke. And people started taking it search. You know why? Because people thought it was funny. Yeah. Man, you can vote for Donald Trump thinking it's funny. Oh, I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. Oh. And what happens? He'll win. Are you ready for something that we're not taking serious to become a serious issue? No. But this is the thing that we don't talk about. Yeah. Because you sit there and you do like most of us alphas do. We are at work. You're making sure your kids are straight. You make sure your spouse is straight. You make sure your parents, if you have older parents that you're taking care of straight. You make sure everybody is good. And when you finally get a moment to yourself, you look up and you're like, he's still in the race? What's going on? You don't know what's, what to do. You don't know what to say. And then you got people like, uh, what's it, Christy? Governor Christy? Chris Christy, yeah. Now he's on the bandwagon. He's supporting Trump. Yeah. You know, Trump ain't done nothing for him. And quite frankly, a lot of the candidates that back him aren't really that important. Or the views that they stand for aren't really that great for America. And the um, I think on the Republican side, um, the candidates that you know could actually do something, they don't back him anyway. And then, who is he going to get to be his vice president? Are we going to get Sarah Palin again? But Sarah Palin was supporting him. And she had a whole bunch to say. So are we going to get another Sarah Palin? What's, yeah. what's going to happen? Because we're not going to get a balance. We're not going to get a strong candidate. And his backup is going to be weaker or stronger than him. Most of the time, it's the person is going to be weaker than him. So what weaker person do you want to follow up with Donald Trump that's going to help America out? And then it, it's, it's, it's interesting that you say that because a lot of Americans don't actually know what the vice president does. And they don't realize how important the vice president's job is. The vice president literally, for the most part, runs the country. Is responsible for actually running the country. The president is the one that makes the big decisions when it comes to you know lawmaking and dealing with diplomatic issues. Yes, he'll send the vice president, but your vice president is literally the person doing most of the work, and the president is it. Look at any job. The person on top is the one making decisions, and the person right below him is the one doing all the work. Prime example, that one was too much for you, a chef. Once you get to the position of chef, realistically, you don't do too much cooking. You got the sous chef, and then you have the uh, preppers, and you got all these list of other people. But at the end of the day, who you hear? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Mm -hmm. But it's the other people under him that do all the cooking. He goes through and makes sure all the recipes are done right, all the food is uh, prepped pre properly. But he's gotten to that point that he doesn't have to do any work anymore. But because of his name and his title, he's the person that gets all the glamour. Yeah. President gets all the glamour, but at the end of the day, he's sitting here just like me in life. I, I'm the president. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> it, it, it's, we give people more credit than what they actually deserve. Yeah. And sure, if we put Trump into office, he would still be a puppet. But this is the type of puppet that might try to cut his strings and say things he's not supposed to say. I need you to read off the, the card that we set in front of you. Read it exactly. He's the person that's not going to do that. Exactly. And then, do you really want his wife to be the first lady? I've seen some pictures of her. And that's not the look I want for a first lady. For a first lady. Yeah. You know, I don't want another country looking at a spread like, that's the first lady. I ain't know she looked like that. And we had a brief conversation earlier today in, in my opinion, and you know, you can say if it's your opinion or not, voting in Donald Trump as president right now would really show weakness on the country of the United States of America. And it would open us up for a lot of potential issues globally. Um, 
other countries might feel like they could take advantage of us because Donald Trump is not a real businessman. And the way he coordinates and conducts business is not the way you're supposed to conduct business. Yes, he has this nice glamorous show called The Apprentice. It's fun and games. But none of his businesses have ever turned out to turn a proper profit. And pretty much all of his major known businesses have failed and filed bankruptcy. And, and that's, that's crazy. It's like, why would you give money to a gambler who never wins? And they continue to do it. And for the, uh, what are you saying about the countries looking at us as being weak? My biggest complaint with the commander in chief that we have presence is that he never gets upset. He never shows a sign of anger. And it makes you mad because you want to think that he doesn't get angry. But the, the thing about that is that it's the perfect chest face, the perfect poker face. You know, not when he set up the raids against all these people we've gotten, you didn't know that was going on. You just sat back and he, hey, the president killed. Really? The president killed. Got Bin Laden, got Saddam. You'd be like, get out of here. When did, I didn't know he was after them, you know. <laughs> what happened? You know, he's real nonchalant. But he look at Trump. Trump is very passionate. He's emotional. I don't want nobody emotional in the office. You know, I don't yeah. want you to be mad. Somebody said something, you hit the red button. Yeah. And we're at war. Yeah. And I said, I got I got a son. You know, who knows? If Trump came into office, there's a strong possibility that a lot of people in the military might leave the military. And if we have a steady decline of people in the military, you know, that starts the draft. Mm -hmm. You might have kids that's almost 18. Back in the day when I was turning 18, I had to file up for uh, selective services mm -hmm. so that I could be considered for the draft. People don't even hear about that no more because we don't do a lot of things. When I was growing up, all of us that were high, seniors in high school, we were ready to vote for those that would be 18 before the elections came up because we were taught this is, what, this is our civil duties. Nowadays, people don't want to vote because they think if they vote, They'll get called to jury duty later on that year. Yeah, that's crazy, man. You you can't complain about stuff and don't want to be a part of the solution. You, you can't have it both ways. How to do something better. But read about what's going on. Look at what these people have to offer to you. If Trump has something to offer to you, by all means, vote for him. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. You do what's good for you. But... If you don't know what he has to offer for you, then you need to find out who does. Bernie Sanders might have it for you, but you know Bernie Sanders is—he's an older dude. Yeah, he's an older dude. Um, really, not a good look if the president's in office a year and a half, and that stress have you have a heart attack early. And we gotta see what the vice president can do. You gotta consider those things. And um, one good point that um, Unc said here is um, pretty much. You have to look at the principle of economics, right? Um, the, the seat of the President of the United States and um, our Senators um, and our House of Representatives is supposed to be for the people, by the people. And it's more and more we're seeing, especially the past eight years, that that's not the case. You don't want a President that doesn't view the for the people, by the people like our current President does. Um, you are getting a good look at Donald Trump and he's pretty much saying for the president by the president. What I say is what goes. And continuously says that. Yeah. Now he's not lying to you. He's telling you straight up what he's going to do. That there's, there's no... I think in this case what's attractive too is that he's literally put, putting his cards on the table and saying this is exactly what I'm going to do. And you know, that's what, that's what you want, Alphas. That's what you want. You want somebody to tell you, I'm doing this. I'm doing this at this time. I'm doing that at that time. This is what's going on. You want somebody to tell you what to expect. You don't want to get something and later on down the line, somebody tell you they're going to do this differently. Then they're going to do it that way differently. You want somebody to tell you what they're going to do. It's kind of like knowing that you're dealing with a thief. You're dealing with a thief. You already know he's going to steal from you. But you're trying to figure out when he's going to steal from you. If the thief comes up to you, I'm going to steal your ring. 
in an hour. We're going to talk for an hour, and after an hour, I'm going to steal your ring. You're not going to know about it, but I'm telling you, I'm going to steal it from you. And that's what Trump is doing. He's telling you what he's going to do. It doesn't surprise you because he told you this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this, 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 and this. But at the end of the day, he's not able to do it. No. He can't. It's against the law. He can't do it. It's a lie. It's just, it's not practical. He can't do it. And that's where we, we just keep missing it. You ever wonder when you, read, you meet somebody who's reading palms and the mall, he's like, come on, baby, sit down. Let me read your future. Let me read your... And you hold her hand on, she tell you, oh, you see this line right here? It's good. It's... And you ever say to yourself, why can't they read their own future so they don't have to sit here and pay this monthly rent? That's true. And not get anything. But you sink all your money. Oh, the cards tell you everything. You're going to find love. You're going to find fortune. You're like, man, this is great. How are they able to do it? They weren't able to do it. They looked at you and looked to see what's going on. You know, we all have certain signs that we portray to each other. And people look at key words when they say things. Looking for love. You look up. That means when you look up, you're thinking about it. Oh, you do need love. So she got you. Wow. You're looking for love. And if you don't have a lot of stuff on, I already know you need money. Like you want to go somewhere. So, uh, travel. I see travel in your, in your uh, future. You're like, man, really? Where am I going to? You're going to travel home. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's simple thing. And Donald Trump is just doing that because alphas, you work hard. Everybody works hard. We just want to hear somebody tell us the things that we want. And that's what he's doing. He's telling you what you want to hear. But guess what? We're going to be politically incorrect right now. There's a list of jobs that you do not want to do. You just feel you're overqualified. And no matter how much money is being offered, you're not willing to do. You might not want to take out the trash. I'm not talking about the trash in your house. I'm talking about the, the trash that goes to the landscapers, landscaping yards, um, what you call it? Landfills, landfills, landfills. You don't want to do it. Why? Because it's a stinky job. So, unfortunately, it might be an illegal immigrant that's doing it. Because you know why? He needs to take care of his family. You might not want to uh, work in a hotel, change the sheets. You know why? Because there's some nasty people in the hotels. And you feel like you're better than that. But guess what? There's a legal immigrant that's like, I'm going to do what I have to do to take care of my family. And Alphas, at one time, we all were immigrants. You know, Europeans, I've never heard of a, not a U.S. European here. No. But, you know, the Europeans, people are Caucasian, are called Europeans pretty much. People of color call African Americans. You know, they, who are the real Americans other than the Indians? I mean, the Native Americans. Who are really from the United States? What are they called? Because nobody else is really given that name. Nobody has U.S. Anything. African American. That's good Native point. American. Where's the US American at? So is he getting rid of all of us? Is the wall for all of us? Who is it for? You gotta ask yourself. These are basic questions that you never look at because you have a schedule, you have a routine, and you follow it. And during your schedule and your routine, sometimes you hear about things that you didn't think about. That's true. These conversations are meant to be thought-provoking. So, I want you to think about what it is that we said. Do your own research. Don't really take us as face value or as gospel. This is just meant to probe your mind to make you think about what it is that you're going to do. Um, as alphas, we ask a lot of questions and we make sure that our absolute action is finite. And that we have all the details before we do something. So, before you go vote... Make sure that you understand what it is you're voting for. Don't vote for the idea of what's happening. Vote for the practicality and the understanding that the commander-in-chief that you're going to put in that chair understands what's needed for this country right now and can put us in the direction we need to go so that we can further develop the children of this United States because the children are really the future of this country and not the people that are there now, not the adults. The adults are here to maintain the country for the children and it'll be our turn and the children's turn to keep doing the same for their children and that's how you push the country forward you're supposed to make the people under you the children that are coming up better than you so that they do not re repeat the same mistakes that we've made in history 
So alphas, um, if you like this segment, all right, I want you to like, subscribe, and share this. If you want to see more of this, I want you to comment it on below. All right. I'd like to thank Unk for coming out and helping me with this. And I want to see more of Unk on this particular segment. So if you like that, make sure that you comment on that as well. And um, I'm going to put Unk's um, YouTube channel in the description below when that comes up. And for right now, we're going to sign off and just say, look, like the man's results. So what do your results say about you? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is an F. I